All right, so we talked about several uh, designs that um, design uh, methods that people have been using in uh, different processors. Uh, now we want to look at uh, multi-core. We talked about multi-core last week. Um, multi-core um, is um, taking over uh, the uh, single core processors because of the limitation of the processor technologies and also uh, the importance of throughput oriented computing. We we can have multiple cores uh, on the processor. Um, for example, uh, figure on the right, uh, this is an example of AMD high power processor uh, which uh, we have um, two processors in this example, two cores in this example. Um, these two cores share some of the um, components, for example, instruction fetch, decode, and floating point scheduler, and this uh, two floating point uh, multiplier and uh, accumulation uh, unit, and also share the, uh, some of the cache memory, this layer two cache. Uh, but within this uh, two cores, um, each one has its own pipeline and also uh, this level one data cache. And these two cores will operate um, the, uh, independently um, and then they share uh, these, um, some of these other units. And because the um, caches, uh, for example, level one cache, uh, are private to these um, cores, and this level two cache sits between this level one cache and the out-chip memory. Uh, in order for these cores to operate uh, in a kind of a shared memory uh, architecture, uh, we have to have a way to um, make the uh, cache data coherent. So what we want to achieve is whatever we see uh, in data cache one is going to be consistent with this data in cache, level two cache, and also in the main memory. So typically, if you have multiple uh, caches, uh, you will need to have some kind of cache coherence protocol to ensure the correctness of these data storage. Compared to uh, the right, the left one is a single core processor, uh, which is you know really designed for um, low-end embedded applications. Uh, but the point is, uh, these low-power cores can, um, you know, um, you will see some of these cores on uh, higher uh, power processors. Um, you know, if we want to, um, if we aim for higher performance and higher throughput. Another um, design option is uh, the system on chip. System on chip is very common in embedded domain uh, where we want to have um, very low power consumption and also the um, low cost on this chip. It combines uh, typically multiple elements into a single device on the same chip uh, to reduce the cost and form factor. In this example, this is a chip from TI. Uh, it has on this chip a ARM Cortex A8 core runs up to uh, one gigahertz uh, with uh, some of, amount of level one, level two cache and uh, on chip memory. In addition to this computing core, it has a lot of different um, uh, dedicated functional units. For example, there's a graphics processor power VR and also it has display controllers uh, for connecting to uh, touch screens and LCDs. And also it has a bunch of um, embedded system interface, um, UART, SVI, um, and um, watchdog timer, JTAG interface, and also of course the important memory controller interface. And keep in mind this is a part of the processor and uh, this set of uh, interface, uh, serial interface, power interface, are connected to the rest of the chip uh, through this uh, on-chip interconnect. 
As a result, this chip can be put onto a, a small form factor embedded system board to be able to talk to different peripheral interface directly or uh, connect to LEDs. Um, a few slides ab about cache ca hierarchy. Um, probably some of you have learned this uh, in the computer architecture course. The main reason that we have on-chip memory um, called the cache is to um, bridge the gap, um, speed gap between the microprocessor and the memory axis. Microprocessor runs at very high frequency uh, compared to the memory uh, subsystem. Um, and also the size, the storage capability of these uh, different memory systems are different. Um, you know, if you go from the processor towards the main memory system, the further you go, uh, the larger the capacity, uh, the lower cost on the um, um, media, on the storage device, but also the slower the speed. Uh, so that's why we need to have this level 1, level 2, or even level 3 cache on chip to bridge the gap. But why we can bridge the gap? Um, it is because uh, in, if you look at the program execution, if you look at the, the, the address space where the um, program fetches instructions or access data uh, using these addresses, uh, you will see um, the probability of accessing a small number of instructions is pretty high. And we have uh, two localities uh, that we can um, observe from this phenomenon. The temporal locality uh, refers to the fact that if you access one address, chances are you will access the same address in a short near, you know, in the near future. So if you store a data or instruction into on-chip memory, you have a higher probability of accessing the same instruction or data in the near future. And if we do, then we don't have to go out of the chip to uh, fetch from uh, off-chip memory, which, you know, in that case, the speed is going to be very slow. The other locality is spatial locality. Uh, spatial locality refers to the fact that if you access one location, chances are you will uh, be likely to access the nearby locations. So if you store one block of data instead of one to single byte or single word, if you store a block, and you have a higher probability of accessing other words in the same block. So it makes sense to organize these ancient memories using blocks. So when we access them, we will move, move blocks, of, uh, which you know, consist of contiguous words, to the upper levels, and we'll kick them out to lower levels. But, you know, for read I access, we actually bring this lower um, blo uh, block Y um, as a block to the upper level memory and to closer to the processor. Um, in such a way that uh, with the, you know using caches, we can leverage or take advantage of these temporal locality and spatial locality.